Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Shilpi here. This video is a continuation of the previous video in which I had covered the other aspects of trigeminal neuralgia. So let's get started. Then coming to treatment. So in treatment, there are rare reports of spontaneous permanent uh, remissions of trigeminal neuralgia. The, there can be very few cases where you can see that the trigeminal neuralgia disappeared on its own. So the initial treatment for trigeminal neuralgia is medical. So that's pharmacological treatment that we usually give. So carbamazepine remains the drug of choice for trigeminal neuralgia and basically acts by prolonging the inactivated stage of voltage sensitivity sensitive neuronal sodium channel that governs the refractory period of the neuron. So basically what happens, the nerve cells that are present, they are on the outside, they are positively charged and inside on the normal resting state, they in the inside they are negatively charged. So whenever there is no action potential, whenever there's discharge of any kind of action potential or depolarization occurs, during that time the neuron opens the protein channels in its membrane, in the nerve membrane. and these channels allow sodium ions to flow from outside to inside. So basically the sodium ions start flowing from outside to inside and now what happens the inside of the nerve cell becomes from negative it becomes positive and then there is a generation of action potential this firing of action potential at that time which can result in pain. So this frequency of the discharge, there is high frequency discharges occurs, your frequency increases. So again and again, you know, at short burst of interval, you start seeing there is pain in the firing of these action potential and you can see pain in these patients. So basically carbamazepine inhibits that and it is the drug of choice for trigeminal neuralgia. Initially the low dose therapy 100 mg started with food and a slow increase by 100 to 200 mg on alternate days can be done. It can be titrated to final dose of 1200 mg per day or it can be increased even more slowly. Then there are a lot of uh, you know side effects that can be seen lightheadedness, confusion, dizziness but also there can be something you know in 10% of the cases we can see skin rashes and you know they may signal the onset of anti-epileptic drug hypersensitivity syndrome in these patients so it's a life-threatening syndrome presence with fever rash and you know lymphadenopathy and it can be associated with some other anti-epileptic drugs also and it can require an immediate drug cessation so when it occurs with carbamazepine it can occur with oxycarbamazepine which is also given it's a congenital of carbamazepine and that is also given it's given 300 mg of carbon oxycarbamazepine is given which is equivalent to 200 mg of carbamazepine and usually the response uh, occurs in 24 to 48 hours the efficacy of both are same almost the same but oxycarbamazepine is basically has a better uh, side effect profile uh, compared to carbamazepine if carbamazepine and oxycarbamazepine are effective or poorly tolerated in those cases, lamotrigine can be given, gabapentin, botulinum type, uh, toxin type A, pregabalin or, you know, baclofen or phenytoin, valporic acid and pimozide could be used either as an add-on or as a monotherapy they can be used. So lamotrigine is basically it acts by prolonging the inactivated state of voltage sensitive neuronal channel how carbamazepine act and it basically directly uh, blocks these voltage sensitive sodium channels and also not just that it also prevents the release of excitatory neurotransmitters. Then then gamma pentine this is a lipophilic GABA derivative and it uh, it basically enhances the GABA release which is again an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Then baclofen, it's an analog of the inhibitory transmitter GABA and it acts as a GABA B receptor agonist. Then gabapentine, pregabalin or you know amitriptyline, they are also commonly used in trigeminal neuralgia because of their efficacy in treating neuropathic pain conditions. Then baclofen and limotrigine can be used as an add-on therapy with carbamazepine. Then pimozide has been used. So pimozide, it's a dopamine receptor antagonist and there have been studies that have been conducted to compare kipimozide with carbamazepine and it's been found that 
that pimozide has been found to be more effect effective than carbamazepine but it has still not used as first line treatment option because of the several side effects that have been reported the average daily dose of 4 to 12 mg or 2 to 12 mg can be given then amitriptylin that is a tricycling antidepressant then the, uh, that has been used and it also blocks sodium gated channels and it can be used with pregabalin in a, you know as a combined combination therapy it can be used and it uh, basically the dosage is 25 mg to 50 mg daily and for pre grablin 150 to 300 mg daily it can be even more than that and it can be used in combination then pre grablin it's a neuromodulator it's an analog of gaba and uh, it's associated with the voltage dependent calcium channels the underlying mechanism is not fully known but it's thought to act by strongly binding to the subunit and reducing the calcium influx to the nerve endings endings the newer anti convulsants have also been used then levetiracetam uh, has been used it's a newer anti epileptic drug that has been tried in trigeminal neuralgia the exact mechanism by which it acts is unknown but it is thought to target the high voltage end type cancel calcium channels which impedes you know channel conduction across the synapses so in the past few years the phenytoin has been used and it can be used as an infusion 15 to 18 mg per kg over 1 hour it can be used in the management of trigeminal neuralgia and also it acts by you know pro prolonging the inactivated state of voltage sensitive neuronal sodium channel that governs the refractory period of the neuron the use of the drug it must be continuous if not it can actually the cessation of the drug can result in pain then uh, carbamazepine is usually you know it's used as a therapeutic challenge if the patient is not responding to carbamazepine in 24 to 48 hours then you know the diagnosis of trigeminal neuralgia is usually seriously in doubt and we should look out for other diagnosis so mostly the initial response to carbamazepine is very very good but it drops dramatically by 5 to 16 years and in those cases we usually plan for alternated drugs or you know combination drug therapy or we resort to surgical treatment then topical capsaicin uh, cream you know which is a nociceptor substance p suppressor over affected skin may be effective then lidocaine injections have also been given in two trigger areas and mostly one person it is given bupivacaine can be used apart from lidocaine bupivacaine injections you know 0.5 percent ropivacaine 0.2 percent and you know 0.5 to 1 ml per trigger point can be injected and it can result in short term relief even nasal or oral uh, mucosa local application in nasal or oral mucosa have also been tried then IV infusion can also be given 5 mg per kg over 1 hour of lidocaine can also be given so it can either be given as for local application or as injections into the trigger areas or it can be given as an IV infusion so though it has a shorter duration of action than other the LA but this is preferred because it has a better safety profile when it comes to cardiac and neurological toxicity then there is proper cane you know 0.5 percent eye drops have also been given in trigeminal neuralgia and the effect is very short-lived then infusion of phosphonitoin can also be given with lidocaine IV it can be given this is a water soluble product of phenytoin which can be given together these are mostly potent drugs when they are used uh, intravenously then continuous infusion of bupivacaine can be given around the peripheral nerve branches ropivacaine to trigeminal trigger points either alone or in combination with gabapentine or peripheral nerve injection of lidocaine versus you know streptomycin plus lidocaine can be given peripheral proximal nerve blocks with high concentration lidocaine and tetracaine with and without bupivacaine peripheral nerve injection have also been reported and usually these proximal nerve blocks that we give they should be done with image guidance and contrast screening for vascular uptake then Botulinum toxin A 2.5 to 5 units per point can be given and uh, basically mechanism of action is unknown but it's postulated that it can cause local release of anti nociceptor neuropeptides such as substance P, glutamate or calcitonin gene related peptide which inhibits 
central and also peripheral sensitization then another second other second line options such as local anesthetics greater occipital nerve blocks or you know topiramate can all, has also been used so topiramate it basically uh, it has a property of blockage of voltage gated sodium channel and also augmentation of gaba activity activity which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter then there is weak evidence for the use of magnesium sulfate also so when we went to the pathogenesis we talked about the nmda receptors which are a key step in central sensitization so basically this is a magnesium sulfate is used for that it is nmda a receptor antagonist so basically it helps in bringing down or managing the acute pain of trigeminal neuralgia but still more studies need to be carried out for its usage then somatriptan which is a serotonin receptor agonist it may also exert its analgesic effect in trigeminal neuralgia by reducing pain transmission in the pons it may also reduce the mechanical compression of trigeminal nerve root by a vascular loop so basically it is a vasoconstrictor so thereby you know it can reduce the com mechanical compression of the trigeminal nerve and it can be either given by a nasal route and which is a more attractive route uh, because uh, there are some patients who don't want to take oral medications or who want to avoid injections any kind of injection in those patients nasal route is preferred so dosage is 20 mg for oral medication the dosage is 50 mg and for injections it is given 6 mg subcutaneously then coming to these are the dosages of all the drugs pharmacological drugs that have been described so that brings us to the end of the video so if you have any doubts or queries you can leave a message in the comment section below and if you have liked the video do hit the like button and don't forget to share and subscribe and thank you so much for watching thank you